hello. Welcome to another episode of Building a Leadership Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Nikki C., all the way from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Super excited to have you guys join us here today. We're about to hit the end of the new year, and we have a very special guest with us today. But first, let's give a shout out to our sponsors, and that is Jose Escobar with the Connected Leaders Academy, Noah and Julie with Breathe Capital Planning, and and Patrick Rood with the IRS Secret Society. Super excited again to have you guys here. Bomb Global has been just bringing massive, massive uh, value to our audiences so that you can tap into the journeys of others that are entering in this entrepreneurial space and building their lives through struggles and challenges, but building their mindset and their leadership. Um, and we're going to go through uh, some of that uh, in the new year. So super excited. Continue to subscribe, uh, comment, like, and reach out to our guests uh, that you connect with. Uh, super excited. Today we have Travis Mike. He is uh, the creator of Trav Media Group. He's a graduate of Waynesburg University Digital Media, Graphic Design, and Marketing. He's a Toastmaster and a trained speaker, a business development uh, using the business model Canvas Two Minute Drill. He serves local and national clients with media marketing, and he He's also a fitness trainer as well as a coach and mentor. Without further ado, let me get on my new friend here, Travis Michael. How are you? What's going on, Nikki? I'm also serving popcorn later, so um, awesome. you didn't add, add, add on to my to my intro there. Oh my goodness, it's such a blessing being here with you today, Nikki, and you know just. You know, when we talked before, it was just like everything that we had been mentioning, we were just talking about was just aligning. So thank you for having me. Um, and I'm looking forward to just jamming. Yes, absolutely. And we connected through the Connected Leaders Academy, correct? We did. We did uh, through Jose and Rob. And I mean, just so many great, great people and uh the mindset there is just unshakable. So shout out to Jose. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. Jose is an absolute um, definition of leader, right? Uh, definitely building a huge community. And I'm just glad to be a part of it and uh, his support on this show. But it is amazing how a community can connect you with some amazing individuals doing amazing things and the opportunity to collaborate and chat and have each other on each other's podcast. So it's super cool, again, to have you here. And first, I want to say happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, if, 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 if you have any guesses as to how old I am, uh, please drop them in the comments. <laughs> Yes. Um, so let's get started here. Tell us a little bit about who you are. What, where do you come from? Right. What, yeah. what was your upbringing like and how did you get to where you are today? Yeah. Uh, so I, have, I was born in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Uh, however, I kind of played jump rope over the Mason Dixon line, uh, traveling between Johnstown and Baltimore, Maryland, uh, where I grew up and um, as I grow older, you start to understand your educational journey and everyone's educational journey is very different, um, especially mine, where I was exposed to what I, it's called a magnet program in middle school, um, where I was actually, uh, it enabled me to excel in, in art programs and it enabled many others to excel in uh, the areas of mass communication, environmental science, applied engineering, and then visual and graphic arts is what I end up specializing in at, in, in middle school. And uh, so I tell people I was using Photoshop before it was Photoshop. If anybody remembers, it was CorelDRAW, right? And then, mm -hmm. so you start to understand you know, the, the evolution of software and technology and even skills, you know, and 
your your skills over time um you know the the amount of time you, you you play with something you become better at playing with it right you know apply that to any sport right you know you just the more you more you practice it's the that kobe the the black mamba mentality right kobe bryant um you know he he was in the he was in there working out two hours before you got there he'll be there working out two hours after you left you know are, are you the person that shows up early and stays late or are you just making it on time and cutting out early you know wow. and apply that to your business right you know and, and not for nothing there there are other distractions around you you know tvs and video games and you know it one of the things i i was even whenever i was i, I was recently living in pittsburgh where i was driving uber and i it came to a point where i was like i'm putting more time in, into driving uber than I was putting into my business. Meanwhile, I was using some Uber to supplement and um, honestly have a social life because I was kind of a, you know, as much as as I love talking to people, this was a time for me to kind of focus on me and um, start peeling away bad habits and whatnot. Uh, and that's whenever I yeah, the iron, you just start sharpening, sharpen your own iron. Absolutely. So when you were in middle school and you, how, what gravitated you to the arts and the design? And did you feel that th it was just in you? Like what, what, what were the feelings you had when you had to make the decision, right? Because there were some yeah. options. Uh, so what gravitated you to that? <laughs> it's gonna sound funny but I, as much as i write and read now i hated reading and writing i absolutely hated it and my go-to was always comic books okay so whenever they say a picture's worth a thousand words you know it, it truly is and um i i've been fortunate enough to work with some incredible minds on designing d graphics that go, that create a story. Right. And so that was the comic book method. And I, I've, I've kind of taken that method, if you will, and applied it to sales, sales communications, uh, sales, like sales support, especially wh whenever you're doing B to B, you know there are times uh, I'll sit down and I'll go th I'll go over, uh, and I, I will I will basically handcuff my client to the table, and have them go over their sales flow with me. And okay, let's talk about the story. What story are you telling your clients? And if if you're if you're telling them that if you're using words like maybe and uh um other other words that can be misconstrued in one way or another um uh, you know it's you know it, it's the, the the finites right um so many times grant cardone uh, i listened to grant cardone and he he was talking about he's trying to get a quote for someone f from someone in an audience and so it was like how easy is it for people to actually work with you and for you to get them into your uh into your flow into your system in as a client um and even from a pricing perspective i, I work with clients on their pricing i have high tier app development packages hundreds of thousands of dollars <laughs> um, but i also have 50 dollars sales trainings right. 50 dollars i'm actually doing a I, I don't know when you when we're airing this but um this saturday uh doing a 
uh, New Year, New Media uh, Marketing Boot Camp, where I'm taking people through uh, my systems of social media development and planning and, you know, uh, even a little bit of networking, some food. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that event. But I mean, like, it's adding the value behind it. Right. Uh, I, I want to be able to share case studies so people can can understand practical applications. Um, so those are the types of things that I'm, I'm, I'm working on with my clients and under, helping them understand their flow so that way I can develop the story behind it. And, and that's... Oh I'm my goodness. So Go ahead. No, how important is that, right? Yes. How important is the storytelling piece of your branding, right? Because it's really our branding. It's, you know, our messaging, our business, what we want to put out there. And sometimes we just kind of give what we have going on, right? Uh, this is the service. This is what you get. But how important is it for the storytelling part to get that message across, to bring it to life? The I'll, I will narrow it down to one thing. This is exactly where I was heading towards. Knowing your audience. And if you don't know your audience, your brand story is going to be off. Because you may ha think you have one brand story. Like you think that you fit the mold for everyone. It's not the case. And you may actually have three different types of buyers. Um, that's typically the kind of sweet spot where you where, where, where people find themselves, you know, um, being able to uh, distribute their services across uh, multiple industries. So I, I try to help them kind of understand who the you know, what what level um, I'll, I'll give you a great, a, a great example. So my client out of, uh, out of Georgia, they deal in jet parts for private jets and they're kind of the, so they deal in aftermarket. So typically your, your jet is in warranty 10 years. And then after that, it still works it's like your car. Um, but their audience can be the mechanic. It can be the fleet manager it can be the hangar manager it could be the um you know the owner of the fleet it could you know so there's there there's so many different levels and different types of services that you could typically provide at each one of those levels um you know i have clients that like i said you know from 50 dollars to you know uh Five hundred thousand dollars, you know, and, and beyond, you know, the with app development, the um, you know, it, it just depends on the complexity. So. Yeah, Good I stuff. mean, so what is? I'm sorry. So, how do you personally define leadership, and what does it mean to you when you are not just in your client's business, but also in your own business? You know, I, I would say, you know, it, leadership is just being the example. You know, the Gandhi said, you know, be the be the change you want to see in the world. And, you know, I've tried to put that on myself as uh, a, a personal thing, right? Um, there, there are things that I, that I want to see be better and, um, and, and helpful, you know, providing tools. One of the apps I built right now is, um, I built an app for deaf people. And so functionally it transcribes and also does text to voice in, in a, um, in a messaging like platform where you can save your messages and even um, customize your keyboard with quick replies. <clears throat> so, you know, having, you know, being able to support 
the deaf and the hard, hard of hearing, it can uh, vastly improve people's lives. And th there's the types of things that, I'm th that I think about. I'm also working with a company out of uh, Westmont in Johnstown that deals in autism services. Um, so uh, I would for them, I, I've just been volunteering for their free workshops for sensory, uh, like free sensory workshops for kids. Um, so they do, they, they did free haircuts uh, when school started it, and we just did another uh, holiday haircuts and we did a holiday family photo, uh, sensory holiday family photos. And then we just did uh, sensory Santa. So, you know, we're, 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 we're coming up with great ideas and, and ultimately looking forward to providing a greater impact to the community. Um, so, you know, and the kind of think about sweat equity, be like, Travis, you're just volunteering to do that. Yeah, I am. Cause mm -hmm. I, I know, I know what, I know what that means. I know that, you know, I'm also proving out a model to them and showing them that, hey, this is freaking working and it's working a lot better than we initially scoped out in, in our marketing. I love that. And that is a definition of modeling true leadership is when you, it's not just about the transaction or it's about the connections and the collaborations and how we're impacting and being able to volunteer your time um, and your efforts and building and growing something so awesome and partnering uh, with a community to be able to do that is absolutely beautiful to hear. And, and I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs are on that, that path to that. But when, if you're not, you know, how do you get there? Right. Um, how can you make more of an impact outside of your day to day, your sales calls, your coaching calls, your mentor calls, but giving back, volunteering and putting your business and posturing it in a position where you can actually add value. It's it's powerful. That's true leadership. And I just want to commend you and say thank you uh, definitely for serving your community um, outside of the norm, because there's so many people that need this and no one should be limited just because of a disability or anything like that. And the fact that you're thinking outside the box to those that are, are not ready or able to uh, attach to a resource like that is just awesome. So thank you so much for that. So tell us a little bit more about Toastmasters. So I'm a Toastmaster as well. So what got you into that? And um, tell me how it's been. Uh, I'll, I'll do a quick plug for my book because this is going to uh, talk about it a lot. So I just uh, self-publish Honor Thy Fathers. It's on Amazon for Kindle at the moment. Yes. And the, the idea is uh, breaking generational curses through mentorship. Mm hmm and i was out on my own the first time i started a, my own little design shop uh and uh i came to a point where i was interviewing for for real jobs and the one of the guys called me back and he's travis with a little bit of elbow grease and some TLC, like, I think you could do that. You can be your own boss and you know, do your own thing. Like feel you're overqualified for this. I'm like, man, I'm like killing me, man. I, I need health insurance. Like I need like some, some regular pay, like I'm, I'm starving Marvin over here. And, <clears throat> but I was like, cool. You know, he's like, if you do these three things, check these three things out, let me know or uh, you know and i think it'd be all right so the first one was the uh saint francis university uh business incubator now back then we didn't have this right uh, we 
we had, you know, I, I would have had to drive a half hour to St. Francis in order to speak with someone. And I was like, man, I barely have enough money to drive, get my car across the street to Sheets and back for dinner. Like, it's hard. <laughs> I was like, so uh, we'll put a plug in that one. Um, second one was the Dale Carnegie classes. And I was like, holy, like, I saw that, you know, starting there anywhere uh, back then, they were 1800 to 3000, even plus 5000. Now they're starting out, they're 2500. Now, I mean, they're great classes and all, but um, so I opted for the book. And which that really kind of started putting me on my path of personal development. Um, and then finally he says, check out Toastmasters. I think there's a club locally. Um, I think you would, you would do well there. Um, and I went in and it wasn't like, I, it wasn't like it was like stepped in. It was like, ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> it was not that this was, I, I had a lot to learn. I had a lot of ego to leave at the door. I had a lot of, even between now and then, I don't, I don't even see myself as the same person. Wow. And um, so since then I've held every local group, uh, every local club position uh, from pres club president to VP of membership, VP of education. And um, if you're if you're from Toastmasters, you know what those things are. If you're not from Toastmasters, yeah, and you're not familiar with what it is, it, it is a public speaking group. And the whole idea is to really help you sharpen your sword. And you ha and surrounding yourself in a community that th that are trying to sharpen their swords as well. So they want to give you good feedback. So you give them good feedback and it all works as a, as a wonderful community. Um, so there's where you can kind of like, you just go up there and speak, speak about what, you know, but <laughs> there, there are some training manuals and those types of things that people can, um, can work through when you can earn accreditations through that and uh, even compete at, at very high stages, including international. So yeah. those types of yeah. things are really exciting. So you went, so you did live Toastmasters, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we were, we did the live Toastmasters in person. That's whenever I came in. Uh, that was probably 2012. Okay. Um, now, yeah, I haven't been to. I haven't been completely steady with Toastmasters. I've kind of bumped around, and with COVID happening and life, and, yeah. yeah, it can kind of yeah, be a whirlwind. Yeah, definitely. When I joined Toastmasters, I think it was during the pandemic, so we were just meeting um, virtually. And I'm from Philly, so I did have a someone who referred me to the Mount Laurel. Uh, Toastmasters location. So that was virtual. It was an amazing experience. I think I did it for about a year and a half consistently until I started building what I've been building, but it definitely prepared me for conversations, just for the day-to-day -day interactions that we kind of get afraid of. Because what I'm noticing most are individuals like having the fear of not knowing what to say in any situation. And I'm like, wait a minute, if someone's going to ask you a question, it's your life. You should know those answers. Right. And it's not to impress or anything like that. It's just how do you get those nerves and put them to the side and kind of make those conversations with impact. Right. So it was a, def a great experience. My favorite part of it was table topics. Um, that, that's just my favorite part of everything. And I was also, um, the, uh, VP of membership as well. So that was awesome. 
Um, but yeah, so we share that. That's cool to know. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that. So let's, uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to listen to our sponsors and we'll be right back in a moment. Hi, my name is Jose Escobar and I'm the founder and CEO of the Connected Leaders Academy. We're a growing tribe, a community of some of the highest level entrepreneurs, high performers, titans of industry all over the world. If you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to scale your business, take it to a whole nother level. The Connected Leaders Academy is your hub. You want to be a part of this tribe and mainly for five reasons, to grow personally and professionally. We all want to be better people. We all want to be better entrepreneurs. To scale your influence, we all want to have authority in our space, be the go-to person in our industry. Of course, move the needle in your business. What does that mean? More money, more clients, leads, referrals, endorsements, collaborations, it's all here. We want to develop our skill sets. We're all working on something. None of us have arrived. And of course, we want to grow our network and our circle exponentially with more intentionality, more ROI, and better results. The Connected Leaders Academy is now well over 350 members, paid members. We are in 42 states across the US and 17 international countries. We're talking about awesome places like Italy, Malta, Australia, UK, Hong Kong, Pakistan, India, Germany, France, South Africa, the list goes on. We have entrepreneurs from all different entrepreneurial backgrounds, real estate investors, insurance brokers, attorney offices, coaches, authors, speakers, trainers, publishing companies, martial arts school owners, social media gurus, branding experts, you name it, we have the best of the best of all industries under one roof here. I welcome you to join the Connected Leaders Academy today. I wanna to invite you personally to set up a virtual coffee with me how do you do that? Go to www.connectedleadersacademy.com. Again, connectedleadersacademy.com. Check out the website, click on the link to set up a virtual coffee with me directly, and I would love to have a conversation with you and explore the next steps on your journey here with the Connected Leaders Academy. Hello, hello. That was our empowered to inspire official business launch that we had back in May of 2022. And we are actually going on tour 2024. I'm sorry, that was 2023. It was just a couple months ago. Um, and we are going on tour. So connect with us, buildingaleadershipmindset.com and uh, check us out. But we are still here with Travis Michael and he is just absolutely amazing in his craft, creator of Trav uh, Media Group. First of all, it's established in 2017 how did we come up with that name well it was actually tra ventures like tra like travis's ventures uh that was kind of and then i just shortened it down to trav media group and you know the group being the the different projects that i'm working on and um it, you know even the different hats that i wear um with uh I have, I also, I'm also a director producer that clients send me all over the United States to handle their video production for their conferences uh, from Chicago to La Vegas. Oh, yeah, you're from Chi Town. I am from Chi Town and I have family yeah, in family Vegas. There. there you go. Uh, Miami, <laughs> Phoenix, Colorado, Denver. Um, I mean, so I've, um, I tell people like, I literally have done every type of media marketing job that you could probably think of. Um, I've had some very crazy jobs, uh, you know, uh, I'm start talking about more and more, but, um, I, I actually, I actually sold surround sound speakers out of the back of a van at one point. Um, wow. That was a crazy time in my life. Um, it was all on um, the up and up. Everything was overstock. We had we had credentials to be where we were at. Um, but wild, wild experience nonetheless. So the um, wow. life experiences, right? You know, 
Yeah, definitely. We have to go through them right now. Thank you for even bringing that up because that's where I kind of want to go with uh, this next piece. Like what are some of the challenges you faced yourself um, growing your business? Was it all rainbows all the time? What are some uh, things that you had to adjust just in yourself and your mindset, your environment? Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, there was a huge shift, uh, whenever I, st I stopped selling and started talking mm. and listening and conversing to even find out if someone's good enough for you. That was a huge shift to be able to vet the person and asking them strategic questions that would quickly identify whether or not they're a good fit for you. Wow. And really, it should only take three to five, three to five questions before, yeah. before it's yes or no. And I mean, I'm, I, a lot of what I teach is, you know, getting to know faster. Mm. That's powerful. That, oh my goodness. And oh so many people. <laughs> you gave me chills when you, t when you said that when you stopped selling and started listening, that is so true. That I think is a missing ingredient in a lot of our uh, sales calls, right? A lot of our uh, connection calls. Um, because if we're, first of all, we don't even know if they need what we're selling. So that that's huge. Um, so yeah, tell us a little bit about, um, those yeah. three to five questions. <laughs> yeah. So for, for me, it was like, whenever people came in, even though, even if they thought that they knew what I did, they may have a misconception or, you know, so I try to for what I do, I, I follow a lot of, you mentioned in, in the bio about the business model canvas. Mm -hmm. So I try to help, especially new, like entrepreneurs or solopreneurs. I help that. I try to help them understand the different, it, the, the business model canvas as a whole, but then understanding what their gaps are within that, within that model. And that can be, that can be a hard pill to swallow for some people because um, they're like, Oh no, I I'm the brand. I'm like <laughs> you're not the brand. Um, and if you are the brand, you're going to deeply regret being the brand after you're very overwhelmed with everything that you're doing. Mm. Yeah. And like, it's easier to pass a brand uh, over to, a, you know, your, your children rather than, you know, your, that rather than your name, like why, why would they, they, then they use their name, you know? Right. So I try to, to help people understand how to visualize things from the outside in mm -hmm. and i one of the gifts that i have is that i pay attention to where people pay attention mm -hmm. and you know people will, will say kind of sometimes off the wall things at times not you know good bad or indifferent and you have to think to yourself is what they is what they're saying important to them or maybe that's even a question you ask them you know is that important to you mm. well is that more important than this or this because then because then you're, you're sorry then you're developing a little bit of a hierarchy in what where their focus is um 
asking yeah. asking the tough questions uh the here's the book i was thinking about the book very very hard mm -hmm. while while i was filibustering mm -hmm. um the win without pitching manifesto mm. win without pitching the win without pitching manifesto greatly changed how i sold yeah there's that there's a song lyric I, people want to buy but they never want to be sold mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah. Can't remember who sing who says that, but it's we're gonna true. figure it out later. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so true, and yeah, but that's wrapping it back into the brand story. Yeah, yeah, and just knowing and being totally aware from start to finish where you're starting, where you want to go, and all of the in betweens have to be strategically set up in a way where it's you're building the brand to a level of understanding first who you are and then your clients, right? Because you can have an ideal client, but are you ready to deliver to that ideal client? So it both has to kind of add up together. I just love everything that you're doing. How can people get a hold of you, Travis? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can check out my, where's it at? Over here. Uh, uh, go to my website. Right there. <laughs> right, 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 right. Which way you go? That way. Um, go to my yeah. website, trav.media. Uh, check out, check that out. If you, if you want to book a call with me, there's a, there's a book button. Um, if you want to shoot me an email, you can send me an email at travis at trav.media. Um, and uh, I think all of my socials are on my website, too. Uh, so you can check out that. I'm on TikTok, uh, Instagram. Um, on both of those, um, travismichael.official and trav.media. So. Awesome. Awesome. So we do have your handles. We will put them in the show notes for sure. Now, what do you want to leave our listeners with as far as when it comes to branding, marketing, uh, social media, just anything you want that's on your heart for them to take action? Because people are definitely fearful uh, in this area, whether they don't have um, the skill sets or they're not tapped into a community uh, that have people that can help them in this realm. I'm, I'm going to go um, deep, Nikki. I'm going to go deep ahead. on this one. Give it uh, to us. <laughs> so, and, and this is something that I had to power through and, and a, a real realization that I had to make is that the content that I wanted to put out there was better than the content that is currently out there. As far as the messaging goes, are, are, are people, or is the messaging that people are seeing continuously? Would you, would you, do you want people seeing your messaging over someone else's messaging? And I, I realized that a lot of the information out there that was incredibly debilitating, negative, and not that I'm trying to gaslight anything, but I wanted to help people strengthen this, 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 and have, you know, have long, uh, successful lives and being able to, uh, share, uh, very raw. And so like, I wanted to give people an outlet because everything that people were commenting on at one point was just total, total trash. Yeah. And so, you know, asking good questions, ask good questions. That's a great one. <laughs> asking good questions is, and it's also a great way to lead a conversation. Don't think you're being intrusive. Mm -hmm. Ask good questions because you're going to get some very interesting answers. And guess what? Next thing you know, you're in a conversation and, you know, you're 
how you you how you plant that seed will also determine the output of the flower. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Travis, for your time, for sharing your story, for sharing your skills, your tools, and things that you have going on uh, here. I'm so happy to be in community with you. We've just connected about, what, two weeks ago or so, and we're here um, looking forward to what 2024 looks like for you. Do you have a word for the year? Ah. Uh... Do I have blessings? Mm, I'll I, take it. I, you know, and that's my mantra. And it's something that I really had to seed inside myself as well is in order to be blessed, you must first, first be a blessing. And mm -hmm. I, I try to move, I try to move in that motion, in that manner. Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, thank you so much again, Travis. Thank you to all our listeners for tuning in to another episode of Building a Leadership Mindset Podcast. Uh, definitely come again every Wednesdays at 8 a.m. and Fridays at 8 a.m. Well, I'm sorry, Tuesdays at 8 a.m. and Fridays at 8 a.m. where we will be posting our uh, guests uh, that come here. So you want to make sure you take a look at that and continue to support, comment, and connect with Travis today. Thank you so much again. Have a great day. And as I always say, make it count.